Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've been waiting for, a podcast for podcasters. This is Creating the Greatest Show, and I'm your host, Casey Cheshire. Join me as we interview podcast hosts and investigate the ingredients of a successful interview podcast. We'll talk mistakes, earned skills, powerful questions, and more. This show is sponsored by Ringmaster, completely done for you, B2B podcast production. All right, here we go. Another day, but not another episode. This is a special one. I'm excited because I'm about to learn from someone whose podcast I've listened to so many episodes of, and we have a chance to work together and all sorts of things. And I'm schools in session. I have plenty of paper over here. I'm excited to get in. Well, who is she, Casey? Who are you talking to? Well, she is a leader, an entrepreneur. She is all things HR, all things marketing. She is all about it. Uh, she's very passionate about the idea of employee retention and growth and recruiting. Um, she has lots of expertise that she shares on her podcast. Um, her podcast is the, and she is the host of Hire and Empower with Molly McGrath. That kind of gives it away. Uh, but she's also the co author of Entrepreneurs in an Entrepreneur's World, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. Molly McGrath, welcome to the show. Oh, Casey, I am so honored to be here with you today. And um, I just have to give a big shout out to Tom and your entire team, because I'm beyond delighted with um, you all hosting my podcast, producing my podcast and all the things. So oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. What a yeah. great way to start. Hey, let's just, let's go get some beers now. We'll call ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to open this thing up by asking that question we always ask which is pull back the curtain for us on your show and share with us the most important strategy for great podcast. Mm, oh my goodness. It's funny. I had this conversation last night at um, my EO event. You and I were just chatting before we talked and one of the guests that I had interviewed, a fellow podcaster, her and I were just speaking about this. Everybody at the tip, wait, 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 you guys have a podcast? What? <laughs> oh my God, that sounds so scary. How did you get started? Right. All the things. And you know, I would say what makes, I listened to some of my early episodes and you know, one of the rules of thumb is never listen to your own self on <laughs> uh, uh, your own recording because you're your own worst critic. But my greatest tip is to detach from the outcome first and foremost. Um, when I first started out, my podcasts were so long winded. Number one, I was so hyper focused on. Um, how many people are going to listen to this, trying to be all things for everything, everybody in the audience? How many downloads am I going to get? Is this going to make a difference? Am I going to get a sale out of this? What's my CTA? What's my call to action? You know, am I going to do a good job? Is, is there going to be value for the listener? It was so rigid and so wound up um, that I realized I was not fully present for my guest. First right. and foremost, so when I'm doing a guest episode in an interview and in very similar to this fashion, you know, I had to drop my own agenda and really try to get into their perspective while also speaking into the listening of our, the audience and creating value for them. So once I, you know, sort of burned the boats on just like the outcome and all that, and I really took that landing breath, the power of the pause. Of course, you're prepared. You do research on who your topic, if you're doing a solo episode, your audience, your um, guests that you're having on there and things of that nature. But right before I go live and record and what have you, the greatest gift I could give is just be fully, holy you and just really ground in why you're doing this thing. Is it's not about the viewership, the listenership, the downloads. And it's the number one question I get all the time. How many downloads do you have? I what know, do you get right? out of this podcast? I'm like, this is like my gift to the world, to my listeners, to my audience, and allows for me to connect and collaborate with every time I, I get on with a guest. And one of the greatest gifts that your company gave me was, okay, let's do these 15-minute pre-interviews so you guys get have 
have an opportunity to connect, check in, kind of use it as your locker room huddle before you go on the playing field. I did three of them this morning. And it really almost brings me to tears to hear about people's different business models, their backstory, what they do, why they do. And I just keep just re-engaging with this podcast and loving it even more because it, it it's just such a difference making in the world. So my greatest gift is just like detach from the outcome of it and just get fully present with your why of why you're doing it and make sure you're grounding in that and that will emulate and just echo throughout every episode. Oh, I love that. The idea of the I even, I, I even took a breath. You said like the landing breath. Oh, it's almost like your grounding breath right before going. And I just like felt that calm wash over me. And one of the things that came to mind when you said, you know, I just had to drop my own agenda. And it's always fun and meta to talk about podcasting while podcasting because it can be scary to say, okay, all these goals I have or having even the next question ready, like all these things... I, in all these things obsess over that you listed out, it can be scary to just drop all that and just lose yourself into what the other person's saying. Yeah. I used to have like such a script of the next question, the next leading question, what have you, all the things I want to make sure that we hit as a bullet point. And when I started getting fully present and being present with the listener or with the, the guest And also knowing that we're speaking to the listener, they always give you the next question. Mm. They always give you the next conversation. Now, one of the things that your company has really taught me, there is a framework, there is an, you know, beginning, middle and end, you know, there's a structure to it. Of course, it's wonderful to have that, but it's not rigid. And it doesn't feel very scripted, but you have a goal. I mean, you have a goal of anything. You don't just walk in the gym and just walk around circles. Well, maybe some people do, but it's not super effective. You know, you have a goal of anything that you do in life, but they always give the next question when you're present so many times that when I'm talking or vice versa, the guests talking nine out of 10 times, like, wow, like, I didn't think it was going to go there, but say more about yeah. that. Yeah. Like, wow. Like even you just, you're like, wow, the landing breath. I even felt the calm come over me. Like the listener can just like experience it. If, if, if I was listening to this, I would actually be like, actually be with us and do it. Yeah. Like everyone listening just took a <laughs> breath. And, then, and if you haven't do it now, because yeah, just a little bit of calm in your day. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, one of the things I, I, I wonder if you take notes, I, I take notes and I find it helps keep me focused on the situation. So I'm not like thinking about cats and you know, wrote my mind roaming, but like, cause I, I want to like learn, I've heard some people say, you know, listen once and don't take notes, you know, and, um, but I do. And then one of the things that I do is if I hear something that I'd love to talk more about, I'll kind of circle it as like, that's the thing. And I'll keep taking notes or maybe I'll stop the notes then and just then be fully present. And I know if, if that next question doesn't come and you, but you're right, it almost always does, but almost like peace of mind, I have something circled. So if nothing comes to mind, I know I, there's something I always wanted to go back to. I wrote down, but I don't write down nine extra questions. I just have one. So I know at least one other question to go to. Do you take notes? I do in the beginning. All right. So here's the deal. I, do my podcast on video typically so I can put it on YouTube, use it throughout socials, et cetera. So in the beginning, I was so focused about like, well, don't take notes because you want to be present for the guests and don't want to look down and look like you don't know what, how to organize and facilitate this thing. But (laughs) here's all my sticky notes from my last podcast that I just got (laughs) off of. I do take notes. That's awesome. But, you know, I'm, I'm learning how to kind of mind map and gamify this now. I'll take notes for the next question, but so often when I'm so present, everybody has their own language yeah. and, and they say these just like powerful quotes so often that I'll, um, um, I'll write down their words because it always gives me information for 
leading up to my next podcast, my next question in the podcast and conversation. Sometimes I'm like, man, alive, guys, we got to do another episode on this one because we're running yeah. out of time. And often I'll bring a, the same guest back um, and, and do that. But also after like all these notes I have here, I'm going to use for either future episodes and or my blogs and or maybe some of my social media posts and right. the show notes that I'll give out and things of that nature because you run out of time without the call. So now that I'm more relaxed and I'm present, I, I do take notes. And a lot of times I write like their exact words because, um, you know, when you're present, and you're, you're really connected to your why and whatever topic you're talking about. So often it, the stuff that comes out, is just like liquid gold. And from my perspective, so often, you know, if I'm being interviewed, they're like, Oh my God, that was so good. I'm like, wait, what did I just say? (laughs) Because I just live and breathe this stuff every day because it's in my bones. It's in my blood. I'm to your point, what you said before, like my thing, I am so passionate about the employee-employer relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm so passionate about employee retention, and especially, holy moly, in this day and age of, you know, of finding good people, keeping good people, all that stuff. And I, I just, you know, my book I'm writing right now is called Fix My Employees. And as I'm diving and doing the work on this, it just, um, it just makes me closer and closer to my mission. Every time I podcast and talk to someone about it, you know, and you're, I'm just getting so clear about my mission. Love it. I mean, the clarity, right? The idea of, I found that is one of the rewards that I've gotten from the podcasting is just that you get to bounce ideas off of people, especially when it's a dialogue. You know, yeah. which is, I prefer that more. You're bouncing things off of people. You mentioned a couple things. One, you know, everyone knows my, my secret <laughs> system. You mentioned, um, it's not secret. <laughs> um, we can run out of time, you know, and, and especially if you're being present, you can forget to look at the clock, but you kind of have to somehow wrangle things. And you mentioned bringing a guest back. Tell me about that because I don't think everyone always considers that like you can always bring them back. So don't necessarily stress over trying to squeeze it into a particular point in time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll answer both those questions. One running yeah, out of time and then two bringing um, people back in the beginning, you know, I didn't want to, I bringing a guest on so grateful for their time and their wisdom and their value that they're bringing. And my goal was to have a one hour podcast as three and a half years ago when I started. And now I'm really trying to cut that down, but inevitably, right. People are like, you ask them a question and and you're running the clock. You're about 45 minutes in or what have you. And they'd be like, can I tell a real quick story about that? Or they would want to elaborate on something. Inevitably, I would say, well, sure. The next thing I know, now this podcast is an hour and a half long and I'm not facilitating it, right? So now that I'm getting more comfortable with it and what have you, and maybe my guest is not an experienced podcaster, what have you, they're asking a genuine question. And I'll be like, you know what? We're out of time right now, but if you can do it in like 30 seconds or less, let's do it. But if not, then let's just, you know, can you give us the cliff notes? And so it's my job to facilitate and they're never offended by that. But bringing a guest back, I've done that multiple times, in fact. Um, and, and, And to me, I feel like it's important to so often I'll listen to podcasts and they'll say, you know what, this is a great podcast, Casey, we're going to bring you back. And you really do say something super valuable at the end that requires its own episode. And then I'm excited if it's a a podcast I'm engaged to. And they're like, we're going to bring you back. And then I'm watching, I'm on their subscribe. They never bring the person back. Like, Mm. I really wanted to hear about that. So it's part of like, if you say it, follow through and be responsible and do it is my perspective. And before you and I even record, you're like, wow, I listened to that podcast with you, Melissa Shanahan, you guys had great rapport and blah, blah, blah. And I'm last night, 
Uh, we are already recording that episode. We promise that we are going to re-record on next week. She's on my calendar. It's happening. And because it was just so good and juicy about it. And I've had people like you that have said, I can't wait to listen to that episode. Are you guys really doing it? And so when you do bring, when you say it, so often people just say it, like, it's almost like when you run into someone in the grocery store, you're like, oh God, we really should get together. (laughs) And it never happens. Three years later. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So not just using it as, as a way of ending a conversation, but truly meaning it. There's something about the the authenticity too, that, that you were talking about being fully present, but also bringing your full self. It was that gift you were talking about. Tell me about the authenticity. Tell me about being real and asking, you know, just how do you stay real to the purpose on the podcast? I think the great question. I, I know how I stay real because I know the difference between my early podcasts and now is that I'm present Hmm. in that. And so when somebody says something that, you know, either I see them getting choked up or I can feel myself getting a little bit choked up or goosebumped or excited, whatever it is that's coming up. I, I do it. I just name it and I stay in it. And so, and I'll, if it's a vulnerable conversation or question or what have you, or I know it's something that's going to offend um, attorneys, I'll give you a perfect example of staying yeah, real. Um, my episode that went out this Tuesday the title of it. So for our listeners, my niche is law firms and um, that's my audience. And those are my clients and I'm very niche specific with it. Interviewed somebody who also serves in the legal space. She does a paralegal uh, 1099 contract placement. Her and I are speaking in the podcast, right? By and large, we do our prep call. We have an idea of the title. We have the questions. We know the tonality, theme, and the message and all that that we want. When we come up and we're talking about something and she makes a statement that says, the attorney abuse has to stop. And she sort of said it under her breath a little bit. And she, but it was such a powerful statement, what she said before. And had I not caught that, and allowed the space and grace for her to elaborate on that. And I'm like, all right, wait a minute, Stacy. Can we go there? Can we can we have this conversation? So her and I had the conversation at the end of it. When we were done, Mike, listen, that's the title of this podcast. I go, yeah. we're we're doing it. We're calling it that it's going to be the title's great. It's going to upset some people. It's going to excite employees. It's going to upset the attorneys, but it's going to get open. It's going to get listened. And our message is super authentic. It is a unwavering stand for both the employee and the attorney. And, um, you know, we even said in the podcast, we're calling it this. And we're calling it this and we're naming it this because you guys will open it because it's a gut punch. Right. And I think that's how you stay authentic is when you maybe hear, I don't know about you, but so often in podcasts, it's just like this one statement that is like, whoa, like this is this is where this conversation needs to go. That happens yeah. more often than not in my podcast. Yeah. If I, when you get that level of trust with someone they can go there. And it's not usually the first question. I think sometimes people try to go there or try to elicit that at the beginning. It's like, we just met, you know, even if you did a prep, like this is early, let's warm ourselves up. Let's talk shop. Let's do this. But then eventually, I mean, I once had a guest uh, tell me that in a former life, he was addicted to cocaine and he like, he almost died. He burned himself. And the doctor was like, you're probably going to die from this drug abuse. And he like cleaned his life up and got into sales and marketing. And that's how I met him was as a thought leader in that space. And, and as he's telling me this, and I thought like, are we editing that out? Or what? And he said, Oh, this is my life, man. I, I, I'm, that's my story. I'm, I'm not perfect. And this is, and it was just like, so touching, but you're right. If, if you weren't listening for those things that you are building that trust with a conversation, you may not get to that point. And that's really kind of the, it's almost like an, an affirmation that they do trust you when they when they go to those places. Yeah, 
Yeah. And I'll tell you the greatest gift that you and your, your process have truly given me was a 15 minute pre-call because yeah. as you know, I never did them before at all. And you really encouraged me to do them before. I'm like, Oh my, my podcast, we're, we talk shop and it's fine, but right. it has been a game changer for me. I just had one this morning um, actually with someone that was set up and 10 minutes into it, I'm like, hang on time out. I go, you are in the middle of all this. She employees quitting. She's going through all the hiring stuff, yada, yada, yada. I go, you have full permission to say, I know you're on my calendar right now. We scheduled this a month ago. Your life wasn't what it was a month ago. We don't have to do this podcast right now. <laughs> right. Like, why don't you get through the soup that you're in right now and then come back on my calendar? You're an amazing person. You and I have synergy. We're awesome, but you're in the midst of it right now. And when you're on the other side of it, here's what we'll talk about. Here's the value wow. you're going to create and yeah. then come back. And she was like, Thank you so much. I was like, I. I I can't even talk about this stuff. I'm so in it right now. And so to your point, this 15 minute, I'm pretty salt to the earth with people. I'm like, you, if you seem, listen to any of my podcasts, you know, I'm just a kind of bold straight shooter person. And it is helpful because when they do tell their stories, I will say, can we go there? Can, can we go there or can we not? And I can tell within that 15 minute prep call, how many people are very analytical, data driven, very serious. And, and so that's going to be the tonality and the message of the podcast, which speaks to a lot of people. I work with attorneys. I mean, they love data and they're, and by and large, it's an industry, they're very analytical. And then some other people that I talk to are a little edgy and, and more woo woo and what have you. And I'd like to bring the blend in there. But the 15 minute um, pre call has been a game changer for me. I love hearing you say that because I, I think, you know, one thing to acknowledge here is you are completely capable of pulling off a podcast without doing that. And you had, right. And so it was just, it was taken to the next level. It was something, it was like, it doesn't mean, it's not like it'll break if you don't do it. It's just one of those things where the conversations are, is like richer, right? Is that, how would you describe that? It just, oh. it's like a, a next. Yes. It, it's richer, authentic, what have you, because to your point, you know, I know something about the person, they know me, we all do our research, we don't show up reckless, what have you, right. but it allowed for me to know the level of authenticity that it could take and how deep we can go and, or how we can maybe just wing it and let it go wherever. I mean, one time I interviewed a bull rider, you know, and wow. same thing, he was highly addicted to meth and what have you, wow. but, and it we didn't do the prep call this before I had your guidance or what have you in, in hindsight now, like he would say things and I would just be like, okay, on to the next question. I'm like, oh my God, I just ah. like robbed everyone of this experience. And you know, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I, but you know, it just caught me off guard versus having the call and saying what's on the table, what's off the table, what type of tone do we want? Where is this going? You know, what will make you comfortable? Um, it's just, yeah, it's so much richer, so much richer. And um, and I get a lot of great comments from my podcast now that I, you know, before be like very useful information. This was mm. great. And then now I'm getting messages like, okay, you totally made me break down and cry. And at the end of the day, like this storytelling, this is connect. I love this format so much. So, 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 so much. Podcasts has increased my confidence unbelievably. My ability to communicate to the point right now where if I get an email, I will not even reply to an email in a written format, I will pull up a loom that times out in five minutes and I will reply like I am on a podcast. I love that. I've gotten some of those too. And they're great. (laughs) Yeah. And then you get tone, you get 
a good understanding. Sometimes you can show someone what they need to see and, and, and describe it. Something about that, that video and that personal, it's almost like even as we record now, we are on video too. And I think there's something lost. I've, I've, I've done podcasts where I'm like, it's almost like I'm calling in to a radio and neither of us can see each other and you don't know faces. You don't, and unless they interrupt you and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. to everything you say, which is terrible for the listener. You have no <laughs> idea if they're actually in on what you're saying. Right. Absolutely. The, you know, the level of authenticity, uh, let's flip it around to the negative side. Have you had those people uh, that are challenging to that? Have you had the people that won't go there? Like, will we, can you go there? No, like it almost to the point where everything, and maybe it's usually the pros to the guys have done it and gals have done it, too many of these things where you almost like you get a recorded script from them. Have you interviewed any of those kind of people? Oh my goodness. Yes. I have either. I have to be on my podcast, but I, one in particular comes to mind. Um, what, where, what's, their, what's their name rhyme with? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell no. me. But, but yeah, yeah. What was it like? Did you well, a- it, it was, I'll tell you what it was like. It, I was a guest on their podcast. We did okay. the prep call, right? And the prep call was an hour long. <sighs> then I get a Google Doc with every single question that I had to fill out, even though I just said everything to this person during this connecting, relating conversation. So this is early, early on. So I answer all the questions, what have you. It was not only a podcast, it was a radio show. So it was live and no editing. And so we're on the radio show. And I mean, the production on this thing was gorgeous. I'm like, gosh, my my, I'm not ashamed of my podcast, just like all this lighting and production and everything and radio show. Wonderful. I get on there. I'm like, man, this is a real deal. And um, so we're live asking a question, right? And to your point, I'm answering a question and it kind of takes a turn for, you know, I'm just at answering from my heart and soul. And he's looking at the Google doc of what I wrote and stops me mid sentence. And it's like, wait, 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 you are answering the next question already. We're what let's go back. I like he's word for word going by this agenda. And it, it was so, he was so uptight and so scripted by it. I, I, it just was so incredibly painful to, and I feel like it just lost our connection, but also I can imagine what it did for the listenership. And then having people on my podcast too, you know, it's interesting because same thing They're like, all right, well, what's the first question you're going to ask? What's the second question? You're very, very literal. And to your point, it usually is the old timers. I don't mean by age. I mean, veteran seasoned podcasters who have been out there that are very, very scripted um, with the process. And I believe in a process. I love process but it is like process without personality and connection and relating. And I think there has to be a perfect, you know, recipe of it all. hundred percent. It's like when I plan a vacation, I try to plan it so that it has a structure, but it also feels slightly unplanned, you know, like I'm going to have a hotel. I know some people will just go, (laughs) <laughs> and like they don't have anything, but I, I enjoy the process of finding the hotel and thinking about what kind of things we could do around the area. So I like to I like loosely structured. I feel like that ties into a podcast so well. If you can have some framework, like you'd said, or you could have some core questions you always ask, but then release yourself to enjoy vacation along the way, then it makes for the best thing. And it sounds like when you stick too much to that, it just it kills connection as much as you can make a connection with a podcast. You can murder it as well. Curious. Are there any other things that come to mind that actually are anti-connection, anti-relationship building? In a podcast. Yeah. yeah in a podcast. I, a lot of it, I think is for the person to not be so connected to their own why and what they do. 
for example, a lot of times on podcasts, I'll interview people that maybe have books or, you know, they have all this collateral, if you will, and, and credentials and lists of different books that they've written. They're an expert in this area and what have you, and they're making it all about that. And yeah. they keep referencing back to, you know, their, their, you know, steps or whatever it is that they have list out, which is their unique selling proposition or their unique formula, but they cannot deviate away mm. from that. Yeah. And like, answer <clears> the know, question. You don't have to make everything a, a like a, a, a shill for your book. Like we get it. We want to, if you, and if you make that content so good, I'm going to get it anyways. Right. And you know, what's interesting when you just said that it's not even like they're trying to sell their book or sell their thing or what have you, but they just, sometimes I, and as I'm saying this, authors are the worst because they, they're, they're just so, they're so amazing at their craft and it's all about their book. And, you know, depending on their classical training around that, about how to structure a book structure and out, it's just like structure, structure, structure. And they're, I mean, almost to a fault, they are not even a salesperson. They don't even, they're not even selling the book. They're just treating it like a, so academic. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it just really came to me. Those are some of my most difficult guests that I've had that are, you know, two, four, five, they're just, they're authors. Yeah. I've yeah. written books. I've told people all the time, I'm right, working on my fourth book right now. Wow. I would not call myself a writer and I definitely would not call myself an author at all. I'm not, I'm not classically trained. You got four I'm, books. I think you can call yourself an author. I, I can call know. myself an author, author, but I'm not a writer. I'm a storyteller. Yeah. I'm a storyteller and connector. And there's a really big difference between a true writer and a storyteller and a connector. It just hit me while you were talking. Storyteller. What's the difference? What I think you? I think that you can do this. Like it's it, it. There's no like opening, close, making sure that you're following the structure and the framework, and you know, being all data driven and what have you. There's, you know, what storytellers are have the ability or podcasters, which I think we are, and we're storytellers, connectors, what have you. You do this beautifully is that I can go on a rampage, right? Or I can get a little bit off of agenda, but you're taking your notes and you're coming mm. back. You're like, great point. And it's not inauthentic, you know, acknowledging, and then you're recapping. You're you're allowing the freedom and the fluidity and the connection of the conversation, the podcast, the book, whatever it is, but then you're also facilitating it. Mm -hmm. And so you're having the ability to be in it be present, but then also our jobs, I think as, as, as podcasters or any, you know, if we're out front and visible and bringing a message out to the world is to facilitate it too. Right. Right. There's something about asking questions that this facilitation, you mentioned like a moment ago that you just had this thought. I love when I'm constantly having those thoughts and, I, and it's <laughs> great when your guest is like, you know what? I never realized that about my childhood, you know, or something. And you're just like, you like, it was almost like you create a little Oprah moment for them where they're getting a little self-realization from this. That means they're just, they're so present and that some synapse is firing some connection they never thought of before. And it's like, ah, this is, this is real. Um, I just, I get so much pleasure from that, but it also means you're lost in the conversation. And I think one of the things that came up for me was I, and back to being authentic, authentic is that I like to ask questions. I want to know the answer to, and I'm not, I can't, I don't have the patience either to ask questions. I don't care about, you know, so <laughs> like, Oh, well, tell me more about this. It's like, no, no, tell me, <laughs> what did you discover? You know, it just makes it so much more fun for the both of us. Yeah, it is. In, yesterday I was on a podcast, which they, they diversify and multiply, whatever the term is. It was a Facebook live, but then they strip it down, make it podcast, all the things. And there are three of us. 
it was two people and I was a guest on their show is interesting. And it was really cool because we had this conversation about the difference between management and leadership. And mm. it just is really fun conversation or what have you. It, it was great because at one point, all three of us are like cutting each other off and just like having these popcorn moments where, it, and all of a sudden it was a Facebook live and the feed is just blowing up. Whoa. Like people are like, this is awesome. Like, what about this? And it was just like, it was really cool to your point. Like you, when we're, when you hear someone like, wow, like when, when you're in it, you're the speaker, you're the participant and you have that popcorn moment and that yeah. aha moment and you have the the freedom and the flexibility to just what I always say kind of just like dump it out puke it out and get it out there and then we can elaborate on it as much as possible as long as somebody's reining it back in and facilitating it right somebody's keeping track of what's going on here you, you know uh well there's so many there's so many things to uh to follow up on that you know that, that's the fun part when you're like path diverging in the woods. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, so many paths. Which ones that take you down? But I guess that's like we were talking about, you know, there's always other, there's always coming back. There's always other conversations. Um, so could you talk to me about the book? You've written books. You're an author. How, have podcasting, has that tied into that for you? Have they been separate? Have you ever integrated those two things? I'm doing that right now. So complete full disclosure, I have a ghostwriter for my book that I'm working on right now. And um, one of the assignments I gave her before we even started was go listen to a couple of my podcasts. I did not give any direction. There was no linear listen this episode, then this episode, what have you. Like you want, I want you to get my tonality. I want you to give my voice and hey, here's another strategy strategic byproduct, I want you to come back and tell me, you know, what's the point of this podcast and who my audience is. And I want to see if I'm making the mark and connecting, what have you. And it's fascinating because we had our first call and she came back and pretty much had the entire chapter outlined. I moved a few wow. things, but she, it, it, she, she was able to pretty much give me a framework for the book simply So I've been blogging since 2008 Wow! and every single week, every Thursday I've written a blog and I have an editor that that helps me with that. I just get to get my ideas. I hate, I hate blogging and writing anymore. It's Mm -hmm. podcasting is my favorite thing. It's so more, much more engaging, efficient, effective. I still buy books. I love books. I have you know, four books right now that are, I'm reading at the same time. I, <laughs> I love audio books. I love written books. Sometimes I'll buy the audio book and the written book so I could dog ear and highlight and sticky note and all that jazz with it too. Yeah. But yeah, my podcast right now is going to be one of the biggest frameworks for my book. It's something about like, you know, for some people it's the written thing. Fantastic. I'm with you. It, there's something about having a conversation that, that inspires me to it, like my, my, my book was created from having interviews with people. And then I summarize what I learned and what I already knew in, in, in webinars. Uh, and so here's what I've learned from these experts and here's my experiences and here's a webinar and my webinar turned into my chapter. Um, mm. But you know, whether it's a webinar or a ghostwriter or whatnot, you're right. It's those, it's the dialogue that, makes for powerful reading. And then you, you told stories earlier and the stories are, I mean, stories are currency in books, right? So it's like, you need those stories. And I feel like stories can come out so much better in a dialogue like this. Um, and where someone can just tell you what happened to them with that podcast, that radio station, asking those scripted things. And, and I, I even vision seeing this podcast turning into a book on podcasting. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, and that would be the only way I'd want to learn these things. You know, you're not going to go into a card catalog and find that out. So, well, you um, know, what's really cool. I'd love it. You said that stories are the currency, but one of the things that even in the book that I just want for listeners, whether you have a podcast or thinking of a podcast, oh my goodness, it's been such a game changer for me. And I was shaking in my boots. I do not like public speaking at all. 
And prior to speaking to doing my podcast, I still would not want to be on a Tony Robbins stage or that's not my thing. This is my thing. I love this. But in the book, she says to me, there's so much in your podcast that we can't put all of it in the book. This cannot be a 700 page Mm -hmm. book. So what we're doing now is actually when we hit up, we're going to make the point in the book. And then create a QR code in the book that's going to lead link back to the podcast to go listen to. I love that. You know, how interesting is that? That there's, I mean, that's telling when there's too much in the podcast to go into a book. It tells you what sources are really rich and dense in, in material. It, it shows you that these dialogues can cover so many concepts that, you know, modern writing can only. Boil it down. I wanted to share with you when I originally did this process with my book. Uh, it started out, uh, we ended up with like 40,000 words. And then the publisher wow. was like, Yay, that's great. But you know what? We've talked about this and you're contracted for 30,000 words. So you can either make that happen or we can talk about you paying 25 cents per word. <laughs> right. And, oh, that's a deal. <laughs> right. And so, 25 cents per word for 10,000 words. I was like <laughs> scratching my head. And so I had to go back through the book and read a paragraph and say, you know, the history of, of progressive profiling, is that, is that worth $700? No, <laughs> delete. <laughs> right? like that. It's, but that forced me to condense it even more. And I just felt like it was better than sometimes in the books, you had to go the opposite direction where you have a cool concept. And some people argue like you read a book in, in two minutes and that's all you need. But went the opposite direction where it was like we pared it down and down and down. So there was no sentence repeated. You know, I'd repeated the same thing like three different cool ways. And they're all really cool sounding, but I don't I'm not going to pay for you to say it three times. You got to say it one time, you know, and that that whole editing process really helped me. Oh, I love that process, too. And I love what you went through. And I'm going to I'm going to hack that. Is this really worth me paying 700 bucks for? No, take nope. it out. No, it was, it was nice and it sounded all pretty, but guess what? It's gone. Um, I love the shift and I almost thought you were going to get to this and it would have been funny because I would not have interrupted you and said, well, actually that's the next question. But the next question that I really am dying to ask you is around talking to the people. If you could talk to the people who have always had a podcast or contemplating having a podcast on their list and you know they've got a business or they're you know in a marketing team and they've always thought about it, they haven't yet pulled the trigger on it. What would you say to them? What kind of advice would you give them? I would say first and foremost, write a check for first, this the greatest accountability that you will have. So um, for me, prior to working with Casey and his team, when I started out, I had a, a gal that was in my mastermind and she's like, oh, my podcast. I'm like, podcasts, I've always wanted to do it. How did you do that? And she said, well, step one, I hired this girl to do the editing and what have you. Then she helped me set everything up. You pay her this amount of money to get you on your platforms, all this and what have you. I'm like, okay, all right, I can do that. And so I hired this girl and then she's like, okay, great. Now I need you to record your first episode. I'm like, what? No, I can't do that. Accountability is fantastic when you're writing somebody a check, because otherwise we'll always let ourselves off the hook. Fear will get the best of us, the inner critic, imposter syndrome, all that. It was never really, truly on my burning desire to have a podcast three Hmm. and a half years ago. It wasn't on my list, you know, but it, I'm so grateful that it is my favorite thing that I get to do. But what was on my list was to consistently get the message out. And so I was doing it in a blogging format. And that what I couldn't, you know, to your point about the book, there was just a small constraint. And I realized when I would list started listening to podcasts and what have you, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could just like say everything I need to say in 20 minutes and get it out to my entire database, get it out to my entire audience and what have you. And then when I just finally did it, I realized it is the most efficient, effective way to connect with 
your audience. It's such a time saver for you. And when you can, when your audience can hear you and connect with you and your messaging, your tonality, your cadence, your energy, what have you, all of that, I I just can't even, I know the goal is not for it to create sales and leads and all this and what have you, but it does. And I don't mean even, I'm not like new leads and new sales and all that, but my existing database, it keeps me connected to them. It keeps me so, especially in this day and age, you know, everybody's so technology driven. Everybody's so busy. That's what I love about a podcast. And if you're, somebody sends you an email or your client needs more time, Nine out of 10 times, I'm like, k- k- go listen to this podcast first. And then, <laughs> yeah. come, and it's not from a place of defer and deflag. It's from a place and then come, then let's talk about it and debrief. And, and it just makes our conversation so much richer. So even I would say truly, if you are in a service-based business and if you have a business and you want to, and you have an audience that you want to speak to, in my experience, podcasting is the most efficient, effective way. I have a 20 year old. I have a 16 year old. We don't have TVs in our house anymore. We do. They are never on. These guys are always on YouTube consuming Mm -hmm. information. They are listening to podcast. That is how it's never going away. You know, it might change a little bit where now we got to do our podcast in 10 minutes versus 30. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I do my laundry, I cook, I got a podcast playing in the background, what have you talk about being able to really leverage your time. It, it just, it's, I I just would say, get started. And my greatest recommendation is do not try to do it alone. Have some accountability where you are writing a check for somebody to help you with it. Cause when you write a check for something, you're gonna, you're gonna show up and do the thing. Cause because you you're right you're paying for it just like look at the gym membership the how many people right. have memberships to 19 hour fitness or whatever the heck they're called you know they probably never even drove in the parking lot and pay it every single month versus the people that are paying a personal trainer and they have to get up at 5 30 in the morning and show up for that appointment well they do because they're writing a check for it and that's the accountability and next thing you know they fit in their swimsuit yeah. And standing up a person is a lot harder than standing up yourself at oh, 5 a.m. when you don't want to get out of the bed. That's a good title for a podcast. <laughs> um, well, you know, all these things and all these ideas, my sort of last, you know, sort of question for you is around the future. Where do you see your podcast going? Mm, wow. That's such a fantastic question. You know, I would love for my podcast to be in every small business and be part in the ears of every employee employer. Um, right now, I am working with my power partners or referral sources or strategic alliances, however you want to coin it, what have you, and I'm working on a, a sponsorship Um, with them as well to help highlight them and then for them to share it out with their readership. But podcasting is not going to stop for me ever. Um, You know, one day when I even sell my business or I get to retire or what have you, this is something I'm going to do every day, all day. And so my goal where I see this podcast going is just being the go-to place for employees and employers to get resolution, answers, solutions, tips, techniques, whatever it is that they need to really transform the employee-employer relationship, which is my commitment. There it is. There it is. Let's, Let's help assist in that mission. Where do people find this podcast? Where do they need to go to put this into their ears? Yes. Easiest ways go to our website, hiringandempowering.com and just click on our podcast tab and subscribe and um, you'll get notification every Tuesday we drop an episode. Every 
Tuesday. There it is. Molly, thank you so much for coming on here. I I mean, I literally have taken so many notes. It, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you. And, and I think even hearing you talk about authenticity and being present actually encouraged me to be even more present while chatting with you. And I've just enjoyed the experience that much more. So thank you for being on here. Oh, and I honestly, I felt it this great. This felt like, like you said at the beginning, it felt like we were sitting down having a beer and it, yeah. I, that's the experience I always want to want to um, give to the listeners. So thank you for creating that. And a good mark of that is when you look up at the clock and you're like, holy crap. Oh, we got to go. Where did all that go? So that has been a, a good sign for me. Uh, so for those listening, if you've learned something or you laughed or you cried or you, there's a little nugget that you like to implement, maybe it's a podcast, share this episode with someone else. You know, get it into someone else's hands. That's thought leadership. And definitely check out Molly's podcast. There's links right in the show notes. We all need to hire and empower. So get in line for that. Molly, thank you again for being on here. Oh, thank you, Casey. All right, everybody. This has been a, an amazing episode of this amazing show. We've just scratched the surface. Thank you all. We'll see you all next time. And next time doesn't have to be next week. Life's too short and we have way too much to talk about. Find show notes full of takeaways, lessons, and links at creatingthegreatestshow.com. For more information on launching your own podcast or working with us to produce your existing show, come on down to the big tent at ringmaster.com. Until then, friends, whatever you do, do it with all your might. Work at it, if necessary, early and late, in season and out of season, not leaving a stone unturned and never deferring for a single hour. That which can be done just as well now. P.T. Barnum.